it's got to the point where I don't even have to plant my garden anymore if I didn't want to. There's a lot of stuff just growing wild in here. All this stuff here with all these pretty flowers on here that the bees are enjoying. These are all radishes. I did throw down some daikon seeds in the fall before I cover these areas with some of my homemade compost. But most of these radishes you see here are just volunteers from the radishes I always let go to seed. I always let my radishes go to seed because they make nice flowers and gives me some free chicken food. Being given this situation where I have all these radishes covering up all the areas I want to plant, I've been putting some thought into how I'm going to take care of this. If I'm just going to chop them down, give it to the chickens, do I want to leave a lot of them? Never really taken the cover cropping thing seriously, but after observing what's going on here, I think it's something I'm going to incorporate every year from now on. We do have some brassicas mixed in here that I planted a while ago while the radishes were still short. The radishes got really tall and we're starting to coat these brassicas. So what I've done here is I've cut the radishes off right at the root level to kill them and I am using them as a mulch. I usually import grass clippings into the garden to cover the soil because they're a really good mulch. But having these radishes here and not having to move materials around because it's already right here has made this a lot easier to mulch my soil. The roots that are below the soil will die off and they will become worm food. So we will be building the soil. But the coolest thing is this has become a slug trap. The slugs are focusing on these radishes. They're tearing them up. So if I want to come in here and catch some slugs, I can just look to the radishes and it's taking a lot of pressure off my plants in here because the slugs have so much food. So when I'm coming through here and chopping some of this down, collecting some for the chickens, I can also come in here and pick off slugs as I go. So this has been a real simple process here. Any of this stuff where it can make a bridge for these slugs to get to my plants, I'm taking off all of that, not the whole thing all the way down. When I take these off, there's slugs on here. It's going into this can that's going to go to the chickens. But some of this stuff that I chop, I just take it, put it right on the soil to mulch it. So I've got all these cover crops just radishes that I didn't plant that are helping me get rid of pests and they're mulching my soil and we're fertilizing it at the same time. We're solving multiple problems with one source. Just by going through here I can collect thousands and thousands of slugs and I will. If I see a spot that is just loaded with slugs even if it's not in the way of something else I'll cut it because I got about 20 slugs on here. And that's a lot less future slugs. Now here's a real cool part about having radishes as a cover crop. Radishes are something we usually direct sow and plant a lot of because it only takes 28 days to get fresh radishes. Plant a radish cover crop. You can have tons of radishes. And a lot of the cover crops we use are not edible. They have other benefits, but the radishes are edible and they're coating the soil. There's no weeds coming up in here. Many different benefits here. Since most of these radishes are volunteers in here, I got probably three or four different types of radishes. But if you just wanted to use radishes as a cover crop, the daikon is the most popular. It is also called the tilling radish. It's gonna go down, it's gonna break up hard soils. And when you terminate it, that radish itself is going to rot in the ground and feed the soil life. Those are relatively cheap. I'll put a link in the description for the daikons if you're interested in cover cropping with those. So I've decided with these areas here when I plant, what I'm going to do is I'm only going to remove radishes where I need to to get plants in. And if they're affecting light, those are going to go as well. I'm going to try to keep as many of these as possible throughout the season so they can continue to grow. Hopefully some will go to seed, they'll reseed, and we'll get the same exact thing going next year and we'll feed our chickens in the process and hopefully take some slug pressure off our plants that we are purposely putting in here, all while having mulch available at all times along the way.
I'm going to show you some beds over in this section that I am cropping for the whole season with cover crops. Here, the ground does not have plants because I've come through here and we had a lot of quack grass. Took all that out. Got a little too nasty over here and we needed a reset. Did plant some brassicas in this area here with a little bit of grass clipping mulch. They're doing okay. But these spots here, I may or may not plant some stuff this year in these areas we'll see if i got any time or if i come up with any ideas of what i want to plan here but for now i'm just going to utilize a couple different cover crops so let me show you what i'm using in these areas here this is the brand i'm using this outside pride here's the daikon radish five pounds of that but something new i'm trying this year is the inoculated hairy vetch. So it has an inoculant because hairy vetch is a nitrogen fixer. So it's gonna get little nodules on the root that help make nitrogen available to the fungi to transport through the soil. So let me show you just how easy this is. You grab a handful, you go like that, kind of just throw it down. Done the same with the daikon. Throw it wherever you want, they will grow. Looks like we got some real nasty weather coming in now, which means this is the perfect time to put down your cover crop seeds. You wanna do it when there's gonna be a lot of rain available so you get germination and the birds just don't eat it all. Then you come back in a week and it looks like this. The cover crops have begun to grow, filling in real nice inside the asparagus as well. You can see here, I did make my final decision on these cover crop radishes what I was going to do with them so many spots I just flatten these radishes just cut them right at root level and I covered it with compost from the chicken run and then in the areas where I'm not going to plant I left the radishes in place I did trim them back a little bit to allow a little extra light to come back through here and since this time of year the sun is going to be pretty much over here we're not blocking any light Coming through here, we got some tomatoes, peppers in here, ground cherries further this way. But the strip of radishes is going to remain for now. And then over here, I just left a couple clumps of radishes. We opened up more light for the cabbage. We'll put some more peppers, tomatoes in here, maybe some more ground cherries. We'll fill in any more exposed soil with green beans. It's pretty much just a big experiment at this point since radishes are something I'm gonna keep growing because they have many uses besides cover cropping. So we'll see how these radishes work out. We'll see how the hairy vetch works out in the other portion of the garden and the crimson clover. We'll try to see what offers the most benefit as far as soil health and weed control. But until then, we're just going to keep planting, letting things grow throwing slugs out of the garden, and we'll come back later and do a follow-up video. Thanks for watching.